WandaVision's eighth episode did a lot to explain the mystery at the heart of the MCU series. Namely, why did Wanda make herself the center of a strange, surreal sitcom? Let's dig even deeper into some of the Easter eggs and references in Wanda's real-life TV land. In Episode 8 of WandaVision, Wanda is made to see the night that her life was ripped apart in Sokovia. Moments before a fateful explosion, she and her family are watching her favorite episode of The Dick Van Dyke Show. Season 2's It May Look Like a Walnut. This is a classic episode of the series as Rob Petrie watches a science fiction film about walnut-obsessed aliens infiltrating Earth. The next day, all the events of the film seem to come true. First, his wife turns into a space invader, and then Rob himself begins to morph into an alien. The episode was a parody of the sci-fi classic Invasion of the Body Snatchers, only with the movie star Danny Thomas as the extraterrestrial ringleader. The Easter egg at play is that this Dick Van Dyke episode is really just a bad dream. Rob's wife hasn't been taken by the aliens. He's not missing his thumbs or lost his sense of humor. Similarly, Wanda takes all of the bad things that have ever happened to her and turns them into a bad dream. Thanks to Agatha Harkness, Wanda experiences a vivid flashback of her childhood in Episode 8. And for the first time, we see the incident that radicalized Wanda and Pietro and drove them toward joining Hydra. In the middle of TV night, a missile rips through their house, killing their parents. Pietro grabs Wanda and pulls her under the bed, keeping her safe. But that's when another missile lands three feet in front of them, but it doesn't go off. The siblings stay trapped under the bed for two days before they move. And, as the duo mentioned in Avengers Age of Ultron, the rocket has a very familiar word painted on the side. I'm on the side of the shell, it's painted one word, Stark. That spurs their hatred of Tony Stark, pushing them into the arms of Hydra as they volunteer for the experiments that would give them their powers. Up until this episode, however, we'd only heard of this tragic event. But the scene in WandaVision goes into greater detail, including a reveal that the shell actually said Stark Industries. More importantly, Agatha questions Wanda as to whether she ever wondered if it was a coincidence that the bomb didn't go off. Did you stop that bomb? What? You used a probability hex. From her perspective, it's obvious that Wanda was a baby witch who subconsciously used a probability-altering spell to prevent the explosive from going off. During one of Episode 8's flashback sequences, we see the Mind Stone float out towards Wanda. As a result, she sees an image of a woman in silhouette, with flowing hair and a headband very similar to the classic Scarlet Witch costume. None of this is recorded by Hydra's cameras. What exactly this is referring to is unclear. Is the Mind Stone seeing Wanda's future, where she fully embraces her identity as the Scarlet Witch? Or is it a reference to her heritage? In the comics, Wanda learned only relatively recently that her mother was actually Natalia Maximoff, one in a long line of Scarlet Witches. Could this be true of Wanda? Whatever the case may be, this is the point that Wanda first comes into her powers. However, it's also clear from the start that she's never had a good grip on how she's able to do what she does, ascribing all of it to the Mind Stone's influence. It may well be that the Mind Stone simply unlocked her own innate abilities. After touching the Mind Stone, Wanda sits down to watch an episode of The Brady Bunch. In this particular installment, Cindy Brady is having an argument with her brother Bobby about her beloved doll. As for the plot of that particular Brady Bunch episode, the doll goes missing and Cindy blames Bobby. The young boy professes his innocence and their argument spills over into the rest of the family before the real culprit, their dog, is revealed. That episode is a subtle reminder that things aren't always as they seem, and we can often overlook the real culprits and create undeserved blame if we're not careful. In other words, Wanda is being blamed for certain things that she hasn't done, and Agatha is gleefully stringing her along. The episode also has a slightly more obvious connection to WandaVision. The doll that the Vision uses to practice changing diapers on in Episode 3 is an exact duplicate to that doll. In Episode 8, Wanda has a flashback to the moment she visited S.W.O.R.D. headquarters. In this heartbreaking scene, she's led to the Vision's body and allowed to examine it. I can't feel you. Wanda's line is a callback to the Vision's last words to her in Avengers Infinity War. After agreeing to destroy Vision to keep his Infinity Stone away from Thanos, Vision tells her, You could never hurt me. I just feel you. Wanda revisiting that line in Sword HQ is a sad acknowledgement of the end of their connection. In Episode 8's post credit scene, Sword director Tyler Hayward reveals that his team has had a breakthrough. They've powered up the dead Vision's body using energy channeled from an object directly affected by Wanda's magic. As it turns out, all Hayward has wanted all along is a way to revive and control this sentient weapon. This revived Vision is a ghostly white, a direct reference to a period in the comics when Vision was torn apart and then put back together by Henry Pym during the late 80s. In the comics, the ghostly, barefoot Vision was drained of all emotions for years, which led to more than a few supervillain plots. Will the same hold true for Vision 2.0, or will it all tie up in a happy ending like the plots on Wanda's favorite TV shows? A silly mission that 
always becomes fun. <laughs> Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.